to finally be approaching. We have about, I think, two more matches here in the next one. Uh, let's go. We're going to welcome back the commentators here, and I'll let them take it away. All right, homies. Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. We are... And like G just said, it's for a Wario Ditto. Oh, this is really exciting. I love seeing Dittos because it just shows um, a lot of stylization with each character. It shows um, each individual player's approach to them. So this is going to be really exciting. Once again, we are seeing Haven and Keese, and they're going to be starting off on PS2. This looks like a button. Um, yeah, I believe this is a lag test, unless they're going right into it. It looked like a lag test at first, but now it no longer looks like a lag test. I think we're getting started. Okay. Um, that was a bit of an odd start. You saw both players taunt and both players test themselves out a little bit. But now we're right into it with Keys taking a quick lead. But again, in a Wario Ditto with the way this character combos, the lead can very easily disappear, especially with two players at the top level. I really like the good one be uh, Command Grab. From Keys, super good catching dial- uh a Haven shielding on the platform. Um, and right now, both of them are just staying on their respective pla platforms, but Keith's able to catch the from Haven. Um, just doing a really great job of controlling center stage. Haven is struggling to get out of the loop, um, but is finally able to. So we're seeing a very interesting difference between two different players on this same character. Uh, if you were watching, oh, that almost took the stock. If you were watching last game, uh, it was very, uh, I don't think we saw uh, Haven use the bike at all except to recover. Here we see Keys making very good use of it on stage as both a zoning and a protection tool, using it as a spacing measure to keep Haven away from it. However, that's not going to help much as both of them get killed at about the same percent and reset to perfectly even. So both of them are trying to initiate something off of Geising then and nobody is able to find it. They both know, like, okay, I might, I might as well just give up a little bit of stage and respect them for doing so, because, like, as you know, like, uh, when Haven landed that neutral he was able to land so much alongside. And these neutral air combos are going to be crucial throughout this, but as is the waft mechanic, I can't wait to see how both players are going to use waft differently, because with the differences in their play, we we're able to see already I wonder uh, how both of them will make use of that very interesting mechanic, as both of them have a loft on deck right now, as you can see from the fact that Wario is here. Um, he's doing just a nice job of, like, sort of maybe trying to bait a button press from Keys, dipping in a little bit low. That was that was a really nice bait. I think he had intended to push Keys to the corner, and as a result, he was able to get the ledge trap with the back end. And right now, this game is completely in Haven's control. He's stopped up only at the uh, at fully. <laughs> Spoke a little bit too soon on the percent. However, yeah, we are seeing uh, maybe Haven taking a little bit of a leaf out of Key's book after the way that this uh, game started. He started using the bike a little bit. But that walk is going to bring it back to almost even. That was a. He noticed that he missed the tech on the platform and he was able to get it off. But that means Haven is sitting at a very huge lead right now. He is the only one with a walk. He's looking for an up tilt. He's looking fall for a falling to up end. So it's up to Keys to play as patiently and as reservedly as possible to avoid getting hit. Yeah, just the, the fact that Haven is holding onto that walk is not, not only the fact that it could kill uh, Keys at any time. But it's also a, a fantastic uh, mental tool, if you will, because it just, you know, the fact that it's there and ready is just a, a little thing that's going to have to be sitting in the back of Key's mind saying, oh, I can't, I have to be super careful on my approach or I'm going to get more. The fact that that option exists just sort of forces Keys to play out of shield a little bit more. It forces him not to jump as much, it forces him to play a little bit more grounded. Um, and as a result, this is, you know, just, just, yeah, there it is. Look at that. He landed once poorly and he was in. Yeah, that, that ditto, as I believe G said when he was in, uh, bringing us back in, I think that's one of the more interesting dittos in this game. It's, uh, the, the fact that it brings out such differing playstyles between each individual Wario is something that's very interesting to see, uh, that you don't, like, uh, get to pay attention to in some other dittos. Uh, where other characters, uh, their only option against themselves is just to camp out 
or to be super aggressive. Warios can continue to play the Wario game uh, if you catch what I mean by that. And then they just they just go in, and it's a very interesting thing to watch. So going into game two, um, I feel I feel like Keys sort of maybe tunnel visioned a little bit into the way Haven was going to approach. We saw Haven utilizing a lot of fadebacks. Like for example, he would stand on a platform, he would run off and then jump right back on, catching Keys whiffing an option, and then he was able to hit him in the lag of it. Um, so Keys just has to watch out a little bit for Haven's approaches and not be afraid to run up and get a little bit more up close and personal because when he's giving uh, Haven that much space, Haven is just sort of freely letting him move around. Just a little quick update, whoever wins this match will go on to face Earl, a Roy player, uh, in the top eight qualifiers. So that'll be certainly interesting because no matter who wins, we will see a Huario versus a Roy next game. Um, a little bit elsewhere in bracket, uh, the only other losers round top eight qualifier that has finished was So Good Pop, who we saw the Wii Fit trainer earlier on stream, versus Smash Puff 64. So Good Pop took it 2-1, knocking the last Jigglypuff out of bracket, and the other games are still going on, including this one, which is the top eight qualifier qualifier. We're going to get right back into it, ladies and gentlemen. All right, so game two. To, they are going to be opting for, uh, what stage is this, Town and City. Yeah, I agree with the stage choice because I think the extra platforms really helps out uh, with the two many approach options and it also just allows for a lot of um, really, really good edge guards just to be able to hang on edges. Um, but right now, neither of them able to get off, uh, just getting a couple of stray. Yeah, I think uh, Pokemon Stadium 2 was a uh, a very neutral stage, if you will. It forced both players... They're both fishing for that up tilt. It forced both players to play their neutral game a little bit more heavily than they usually would. But with the, the inclusion of both the mobile platforms and the sometimes central platform on Town & City, it's probably going to bring a whole different dynamic than Pokemon Stadium 2 did, despite the fact that these are the same players on the same character. Just a fun fight. Haven was so good, he forced an air dodge from Keys, he forced him to fade a little bit back, and then was able to cover the fade back, and then he gets the soft spike from the drag down down air. Oh my god, that, that, the later half of that stock was just playing so well. I think both of these players are playing fantastically, it's just the fact, the, the reason that Haven is winning this is the fact that he's just, uh, he's predicting his opponent's uh, movements more, he's a pr predicting his approaches, because I feel like as a Wario player, he's going, what would I do in this situation? And then he's ready for it. Meanwhile, Keys is just playing this like any other map, instead of trying to predict what would a Wario player do in this situation. Uh, just long on the 50-50, going through the other way to try to read uh, the drop down, try to catch his landing, but the fact is he's going to be finally taking Haven to the stock. Haven, you see he's just holding on to the standard platform, he's just waiting once again for the to overcommit, to push in a little bit too far, almost getting the tech chase quite though, um, and right now he's just keeping him on the corner. And we saw earlier, uh... No, no one has used Waft yet, but if Keys is able to get a uh, setup into Waft off, it what was he just walked? He just slowly walked up. I don't. What was he thinking? Like, sure, if you shield it, you're not gonna die. But what what advantage that did he get out of approaching there? No, uh, that was that was that was a little bit tough. Uh, yeah. I I don't, I don't, I don't want to call it too early. But if Haven yeah. is able to charge those up smashes so confidently, it means he's very, very confident that Keys is going to be jumping in. It means Keys is going to be dashing in. He has made him effectively afraid to do so. But that's the read on the air dodge. Not able to find the up tilt confirmed quite yet, though. Whoever takes this next stock is going to most likely. Yeah, because because walk is a thing, uh, I would, wouldn't uh, be so eager to count Keys out. But it's not looking great for him, the way that Haven just hits him with the back air and hits his own bike. Uh, but the way that Haven just seems to be inside of his head, uh, Keys just doesn't really know how to approach in this situation. As like you said, uh, we saw when Haven just confidently stood on stage and charged an up smash with no answer. Instead of getting punished for it, he got his own option off instead after whiffing the up smash. 
but right now Keith is making a really really good comeback I like the fact that he's preserving the bike on stage he's not destroying it intentionally because he doesn't want Haven to have that option as he's recovering he's intentionally keeping it uh, just alive and right now just about anything will kill I play uh, the up throw is just basically like a little, it's like a little vibe check in a way because like he's sort of checking to see if like, okay, okay is he gonna air dodge here? But unfortunately... Uh, AV in the chat who, as we know, is now uh, qualified for top 8, a snake player, suggesting that they should play a two-stock game and never use Wario. I don't know if it would truly be Wario without him because it's just such an interesting mechanic to see happen. Oh! Whipping it! Up yeah, he hit it on the edge of the up air. He needed to drift in a little bit to the right. If he wanted to connect the waft, this is looking like Haven's game to yeah, take with... right now. He needs, he needs a falling nail. He needs an up air. Anything from those could follow up into it. We saw, we've seen uh, Keys make an insane comeback from what looked like an unwinnable deficit, holding on to waft the whole time. But with the fact that he just lost waft, throwing both bikes at his opponent, with the fact that he lost there. Waff there, there it is. That is going to end it. Haven takes it 2-0 over Keys and moves on to face Earl the Roy. But we will be getting those two on stream in just a moment, ladies and gentlemen. I really don't think a Roy Wario match is going to top that insane Wario ditto that we just saw here. Really like um, how Keese was sort of towards the end of the set. We saw him starting to adapt a little bit. His advantage state on the second stock was ridiculous. He just kept on piling all of this damage on on Haven, and he really made it a toss up over who was going to win game two. But ultimately, uh, just because of the fact that he whiffed that that down B, that sort of kind of sealed his fate prematurely.